The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. morning church i hope you're having a blessed day today today we are going to start a little three-day special lesson review i want to go through just a couple things out of the word of god that we have already talked about before just to kind of refresh your memory kind of bring back some old truth not really old truth but fundamental truth and understanding the word of god we're going to do this because as we travel and as we preach the word of God seems to repeat in the fact that the spirit of God emphasizes some of the same truth again and again. Obviously, it is my purpose in life not only to preach the word of God, but especially when it comes to teaching people how to walk in their purpose. It's uh, the, the main thing of my life. So when we travel a lot, we talk about some of the same exact fundamental truth. 1 Kings 17, verse 3, 4, which is the verses God used to call me to the ministry. Then we talk about uh, purpose call identity, which is 1 John 3, 8, and 9. And then we talk about um, we talk about sacrifice and obedience, which is Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8, and verse 9. So we're going to take three days. These are going to be short lessons. They're only going to be 15 minutes, as we have already discussed these previously many times. I just want to take just a couple days to just briefly, quickly go back through this. I think it's important every once in a while to just refresh our memory and remind us of these truths. Because not only are they important and vital, but they are foundational to what we believe in the Word of God. So we're going to be looking first at 1 Kings 17, and then we're going to talk about purpose call identity, and then we are going to talk about uh, sacrifice and obedience. So we're going to talk about provision and obedience, purpose, call, identity, and then we're going to talk about sacrifice and obedience. And these three fundamental truths are the foundation of what we do, not only when we were in America, but why we do what we are do in Brazil. The fundamental promises and truths of the Word of God. So I'm going to pray, and then we're just going to jump right into this. The next three days, or today and the next two days, are just going to be reviews. And then starting next week, we will go back into our series on end time prophecy, picking up with Isaiah chapter 34. So Father, I thank you. I pray you bless everybody under the sound of my voice. Let the word become wisdom revelation in the knowledge of your son. Spiritual seed sown, producing in our body, mind, will, and emotion, transforming us by the renewing of our mind, conforming us to the image of Christ, growing us up in the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. God, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We're going to read the first seven verses of 1 Kings 17. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook chariot that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. This is by far the most read and preached section out of the word of God in my personal life. I've taught this more times than I have taught anything else. Uh, we have a series called Provision and Obedience. We have a series called uh, Walking in Purpose. And if you go back and watch those series, we have taught this this single passage, plus what I have taught in churches in Brazil, I've probably taught this passage at, at least 200, maybe 300 times. Uh, it's, it's the foundation of my life because when God called me to the ministry, he used verses 3 and verses 4. 
So I'm just going to briefly go over this. Like I said, we don't have time to go through all the details today. If you would like more information, you can go and look at our other series, Provision and Obedience, Walking in Purpose, or just search First Kings 17 on our uh, on our website to pull up this information. Or you can take our Divine Purpose curriculum where we go through this passage verse by verse. Now, the thing I want to start with is there are two foundational truths in verse 3 and verse four to understanding that if you are going to do the will of God, you must understand these promises. Not just understand these promises, but they are truth in the word of God. Not only do you understand the promise, you do understand the truth, but it's these two truths specifically that'll keep you from walking away from God. When people backslide, when people draw back from God, it is almost exclusively based in these two facts. And it's these two things that if I would have known, I would have not walked away from God. You know, my personal testimony, I walked away from God for five years and it was ignorance because I did not know what God says right here in this passage. That's why this passage is not only just where God called me and it's fundamental. It literally was the choices I made in life. And now that I know these two truths, it's the reason why I do what I do. So the first truth is God says, I will feed you there. See, when God speaks to Elijah in the beginning, Elijah is in a city called Samaria. He's where, he's where, it's where King Ahab is residing. You know, and he goes and speaks to the king. He's in the city of Samaria. Then God tells him to go to the brook Cherith, which is 20 miles east inland away from the city. He's going to be in seclusion at the brook Cherith. But God says, I will feed you there. Because Elijah spoke to the king, declared the drought, no more rain. And we know that if there's no more rain, that means there's going to be no more food. Drought is always indicative of famine. Famine always comes after drought. So Elijah prays the drought, famine comes next. And if you just think about this for a moment, who dies first in a famine? The king or the slave? And we know that Elijah, the Tishbite, the word Tishbite means captivity, Elijah comes from captivity. More or less, Elijah was a slave. And that background that we learn about Elijah because of his name teaches us that if Elijah does not move, he will die where he stands. If he doesn't leave the city, he's going to have no food. And the first truth we learn is that the provision of God is where God has told you to be. It's not here. It's there. If you stay where you're at, you die where you stand. That's truth number one. It's a very important truth that you must walk in obedience. You must go when God says go, and you must go where God says to go. If you don't go where God tells you, you're not going to receive the thing that God has already spoken, promised, and given. God's already given it. That's truth number two. That it says in verse four, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. It's there, not here, but there. Also, God says, I have commanded, past tense, already done. See, when God speaks to Elijah in 1 Kings 17, he says, I told the ravens before I told you. See, before God ever speaks to you in life and says, go somewhere, do something, step out in faith, God already spoke the provision. God already told the provision to provide for you before he ever told you what to do. See, a lot of times this is where we we mistake what God does in our life. We think that God speaks and then we pray and ask God to provide for the thing he spoke about. See, but that's not true. See, before God spoke to you, he already spoke to the provision. Now, every time I preach this message, I always ask the same question. I said, there's only one. I said, if God spoke to you right now, no matter what God said, there would only be one question in your mind. Will you provide if I do it? That's the only question anyone asks. Go be a missionary, start a business, do this, do that, do this, do that. Whatever God says, the only question is, will you provide if I do it? And I go and I ask that, tell everybody the same thing. That's the only question. And here's the answer to the question. The answer to the question is no. God is not going to provide. See, the mistake that you have is when you think that God speaks, then God must provide 
what you say is that God has not already done it. See, the truth is God is not going to provide. God has already provided. He's already given everything that pertains unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called you to glory and virtue. That these exceeding great precious promises, you may be partakers of the divine nature. Quoting 2 Peter, it says that all spiritual blessings in heavenly places hath been given unto you. It's already been given. See, the thing that you must understand is that God does not respond to you. See, a lot of people think, I move, then God moves. But that's not true. See, God already provided. God already moved. God already spoke the provision. Then God tells you, then you respond to God in faith. See, God doesn't respond to you. You respond to God. See, before God told you, God already told the provision. The second truth is that the provision of God is made available before the need. See, truth number one, the provision of God is where God told you to be. If you stay where you're at, you die where you stand. Truth number two, the provision of God is always made available before the need. Before God told you, God already told the provision. See, it's already done. The provision is waiting on you when you get there. You must go there to receive what God already gave. See, it's already done. And it's by these two truths that we do what we do here in Brazil. There's a reason why we can move across the country, move across the world, step out, do this, do this, do this. And people see all the miracles and the blessings and the financial prosperity and the provision of God. And people see all these things and they say, how do you do that? And it's simple. I do what God tells me to do. I go where God tells me to go. And I know that when God speaks to me to do something, to go somewhere, it's because God already spoke that when I get there, it's waiting on me. It's already provided. It's already done. Everything that I will need to accomplish what God wants me to do has already been given before God told me. And if you understand that truth, you will begin to realize that when God speaks, all you have to do is move and you will receive because it's already done. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. Have a great day. Like, follow, share, drop us a comment, and we will see you tomorrow. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I be? Cause you take good care of me. You take good